Technology, politics, business do change the world. Not always in a good way, but they do. <laughs> What about art? If you pay attention to the news, it seems as if our world is at an apocalyptic crossroad. Climate change, war, nuclear proliferation, and political conflict are just a few of the issues we face. Sometimes it hardly seems worth getting up in the morning. But Harvard psychologist Steven Pinker claims that if you look carefully at the data that there is less war, poverty is on a decline, and people are living longer than at any time in our past. How does this jive with all the bad news? Is the media to blame? There's a saying in the news business that if it bleeds, it leads, meaning bad news sells. Are we predisposed to preferring catastrophe to good fortune? Well, there are certainly many troubling events in our world. This feeling of social malaise is built in part by disproportionately negative information. And perhaps it's possible to counteract this. Can art inform, convince, or inspire people to take positive action? In 2015, world leaders at the United Nations agreed to 17 goals to make the world a better place for all its citizens. The hope is that these goals will be reached by 2030. Is it possible that art might be able to play a part? The work of many artists address social issues. In this video, we are going to look at just a few of them. For our purposes, we're going to group these artists into four categories. Those that bear witness to events, those that advocate for social justice, those that address environmental issues, and those that use art for community building. While the work of these artists is not bound by these arbitrary divisions, they may give us some insight into their work. European painting in the early part of the 19th century was highly influenced by the humanist ideals of the Age of Enlightenment and its subjects were generally from mythology, history, or representative of the upper classes. By mid-century, intellectual idealism was supplanted by a pragmatic view of the world known as realism. Some artists began to use the common classes as subjects for their work. In the 20th century, artists continued to depict people afflicted by social and political circumstances. There was no lack of war, poverty, discrimination, or political upheaval to provide fodder for these artists. Although artists continued to use printmaking, painting, or sculpture to express their views towards world events, photography emerged as a particularly powerful medium for documenting them. In a field dominated by men, Margaret Burke White was a female pioneer in photojournalism. She was the first woman allowed to photograph in war zones. She fearlessly documented events during the Great Depression, the concentration camps of Nazi Germany, the Soviet Union during Stalin's reign, apartheid in South Africa, and a partition of India and Pakistan. Her photos, published in Life magazine, were often the first visual evidence of these events for Americans. She was known as Maggie the Indestructible by her male colleagues. The moving work of the previous artists witnessing these events is certainly significant, but many of those artists were outside observers who could retreat to safety if necessary. Other artists live as members of a minority or oppressed group. Whether fighting for the rights of workers, women, people of color, or LGBT people, the work of these artists come from a more personal perspective. Often they are putting their own safety and freedom on the line as they try to speak truth to power. In 2015, Chinese artist Ai Weiwei traveled to the island of Lesbos in Greece to visit the camps of refugees fleeing the war in the Middle East. Struck by the depth of the problem and the shocking conditions of the camps, he began using materials like clothing and life jackets discarded by the refugees for a series of installations. These works are meant to educate, and perhaps shame, wealthier countries into taking more action to help these displaced people. Unfortunately, in many places it doesn't take more than going outside to see the air we breathe and the water we drink is plagued by pollution. Wild swings in weather are telling us that the climate is changing. Artists concerned with the environment often make works that serve dual purposes. Whether it is cleaning up sites, planting trees as part of the work, or creating sustainable public spaces, these artists not only present information about the state of the planet, 
that design artworks that allow for restorative action. British sculptor Jason DeCarries Taylor displays his work in an unusual venue. In 2004, he began to place his sculptures on the ocean floor. Although only visible by divers or in photographs, the figures in these works create an interesting visual paradox. While these figures seem out of place, they serve as a foundation for the rebuilding of the coral reef. Over time, nature will appropriate Taylor's sculpture to help restore the delicate ecosystem. The work we've seen so far addresses big issues. Artists are world citizens, but they're also part of local communities. Some artists use their creativity as a focal point for community building projects. These artworks often involve a wide range of community members and result in ongoing projects for community development. Nick Muniz was born in Brazil, but immigrated to the U.S. to pursue a career as an artist. He is known for appropriating iconic images from art history in his photographs. He returned to Brazil and visited the largest garbage dump in Rio de Janeiro. There he became enamored of the catadores, of people paid to pick through the garbage for recyclable material. He began to make portraits of these catadores, placing them in compositions from Western art and incorporating garbage from the landfill. Many of the catadores became assistants in the making of the artwork. Moniz donated profits from the sales of the art to the community of catadores. A film, Wasteland, by Lucy Walker, documents the project. All art is subject to criticism, and the work we have seen is no exception. But even here, this art provokes a different response than the usual critique of an artwork's visual effectiveness. Some critics fault these artists for exploiting the plight of others to secure their own status in the art world. This may be a fair point, and one you will have to decide for yourself. However, whatever the motive, while art may not be able to save the world, it can change it in perhaps small but meaningful ways.